Hey, what's up guys? So as an aspiring musician, I decided to move to New York. I went there to study and to play. Now, I remember very clearly someone giving me a song to play. It was a jazz song. It had a lot of chords and it had a lot of chords that I couldn't really play. It had a lot of sharp nine, flat nine, 13, flat 13. And at that moment in time, I knew what it was, but I wasn't that comfortable reading it on the spot and playing it. So I kind of did a trick that works really well. And this is what I want to talk about. I used the shell voicings. And these chords are super, super helpful to be able to play any song right now. What are shell voicings? Ah, so beautiful. Simple, but very beautiful. So what's happening here? What are we playing? Basically, I'm playing only three notes, but I'm able to convey the meaning of the chord. And that is the root, which is the one, that's the name of the chord. And then, and then the three, which tells us whether it's major, beautiful, or minor. If you like this, please like and drop a comment telling me what the next video should be about. And then the seventh, that tells us whether it's more stable or more tension. More tension means we're going somewhere. So in combination with the three and the seven, it sounds like this. Or with a flat seven. I'll explain exactly what it is in a second. So when we have a song like this one here, Alice in Wonderland, I still see the notes that I had when I was in high school and wrote what keys are the right keys to play on. So when you have this kind of song and you want to just play the chords, these chords are super helpful. Actually, a trick that I do is sometimes opening randomly in a page and then saying like, oh, let me just play this song. It was randomly an artist. What I'm going to do in the rest of this video is work on the shell voicing with four strategies. So first, we'll see the shapes from the 6th string and the 5th string. Second point, we'll talk about how to use them with the real book. Three, we'll use them with passing chord. Four, we'll use them with trident substitution. Here we go. One, like everything with music, we need to first understand what is the framework. So we got to know the shapes. Let's do it. These are the shapes from the 6th string. This is G major 7 here. So we have the root, this is G, we have the third, this is B natural, and we have the seven, this is F sharp. This is G major seven, and we only have the one, three, and seven of the chord. Again, the three and the seven tells us whether it's major or minor, major seven, or dominant, which is basically telling us the vibe, the sound of the chord. The next shape is G seven, where I change the F sharp to F natural. G7, then G minor 7, changing the B natural into B flat, and then this is G diminished, changing the F natural here into E. And this shape, the G diminished, is also very usable for G minor 6, which is a huge plus. So this is because this is minor, this is basically G minor, and this is the 6. But in this context, we can use it both for G minor 6 or G diminished. As a reduction, we can also use the G diminished when we see G half diminished. So for example, when you have these G minor 7 flat 5 chords, we can use this shape. When we have G minor 6, we can use this shape. We can, when we have G diminished, we can use this shape. All right, from the fifth string, we have C major seven, one, this is C, three, this is E, and B natural, this is B, this is a seventh. So again, we have the three and the seven. It's a beautiful sound. And we 
have C7, I'm taking the B natural and take, moving it to B flat. This is B flat, this is C7, this is C dominant. Then we have C minor 7, taking the E natural and moving it to E flat. C minor 7. And then C minor 6, or C diminished. Very useful shape, the same idea that I was talking about with the G. So from the fifth string again, C major 7, C7, C minor 7, and C diminished. From the sixth string, G major 7, G7, G minor 7, and G diminished. With guitar, one of the most important things to do is to see the notes on the sixth string and the fifth string. If we see it clearly, all we need to do is take this shape and move it around. So this would be A major 7, A flat major 7, G major 7, F major 7, etc. 2. The Real Book. This is basically sort of the Bible of jazz. So before you swear to it, what I would do is make sure you can play these shell voicings in this context. So what I would do, I would just take a random page, for example, Just Friends. I love this song actually. And I would put it in front of me, in front of me. What I'll do is look at a chart without looking at my left hand and just read the chords down in time to make sure I know the shapes and see it really clearly. Here we go. Just Friends in the key of G. You get it. So I'll just go on taking random songs in this in this beautiful book and saying, okay, cool. What is the song? The Fields We Know by Keith Jarrett. So I'll just take this song and just play the chords and making sure I see the shapes. Now, I will not look at my left hand. I think this is really helpful to kind of learn the guitar. Challenging, but helpful. As you can see by knowing these couple of shell voicing shapes, you can really play any song right now. One more note that is important. So when I'm looking at these songs, for example, I'm looking at the dolphin right now. So this song has a lot of different tensions written. G7 in parentheses, sharp 11, or B7 over A. So the first thing I would do is eliminate all these elements. So again, playing sharp nine, flat nine, nine, 13, all these things are great, but they're not the actual bread and butter of the song. So by using the shell voicing, you're actually conveying the real meaning of the song. Again, of course, it's really nice if you have an inversion, it's really nice if you're playing flat five or flat nine, and some songs that moment would have more significance, but usually all you need to do is play the actual chords. So by knowing the shell voicing, you're actually playing the chords, which is awesome. So don't worry about the tensions and just play the shell voicings when you're working with these songs. Three. Add a chromatic chord half step above or beneath the chord that you're going to. So when we're playing jazz, we have the tendency to add some cool moments. And one of the cool moments is basically playing the wrong chord on the downbeat. As ridiculous as it may sound, when we have an F7, a lot of times we play an F sharp 7 leading to the F7 or E7 leading to the F7. And it's a really simple device, but it's super, super helpful. So if I'm taking a blues in F, for example, so the first chord is F and then I'm going to B flat, so I can do one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So what I was doing right now on beat four, I played a chromatic note to the chord that I'm heading to. So if I'm going from F7 to B7, I can add a chord either on beat four here on the B7 or on the A7. Again, A7 would sound a little harsher, and the reason is try the substitution that we'll talk about in a second, but you can add those chromatic passing chords without feeling any guilt. 
I'm gonna play a blues in F and play only half step above the chords. Check it out. One, two, one, two, three, four. It works, of course I would not do it that systematically, but check it out if I'm connecting half step above, half step beneath, and sometimes just playing the chords. One, two, three. Four, adding triton substitution to the shell voicing. So just a recap, if you never heard about triton substitution, what it really means is you can take a chord, take F7, and substitute that chord with the chord B7. Why? The reason is simple. We have the three and the seven of F7, there is also the three and the seven in the chord B7. So basically the only difference between F7 and B7 is the root in that sense. Of course, it's not the same sound, but that's why it's called a substitution. So Triton substitution is a very common substitution in jazz world. When we're using the shell voicing, what we can do is take that blues and add some Triton substitutions as well. I'm gonna add the Triton substitution, but also the chromatic approach that we did before. Check it out. One, two, one, two. As you were seeing, I was adding the trident substitution almost all the time, and then sometimes I also added a chromatic chord on the two, so instead of just going to G minor, I played A flat minor to G minor, F sharp, because that's the trident substitution of C, to C resolve. So utilizing all these colors and elements when we're playing jazz is a very common thing, and it brings more motion and more excitement to the song. As a general note, I think when we're playing with people, we want a lot of clarity. So I think by giving them the chords, the actual chords of the song in a clear time, we are functioning as a partner in crime in a very positive way. You know, we're making music together and we're supporting them. We're not just playing random tensions. Now, of course, playing chords and tensions is awesome, but I think the first step, and that's the main thing, is being there for the other person to solo and to play. If it's a singer, if it's a guitar player, if it's a saxophone player, you wanna give them a base ground to work with. So that means that they can hear the chords, the form, and basically the song in a super clear way. And I feel the shell voicings are the answer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting and helpful. And please share this video with someone that needs some shell voicings in their life. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.